I were to tell you that esports generates a lot of money, it would be like stating that the sky is blue, or if you stand in the rain, you're going to get wet. In all three of these instances, well-informed citizens would have no reason to question the veracity of my statements as they are just givens, known quantities that don't warrant disagreement. But exactly, or for the sake of our discussion, how much roughly is a lot? Well, according to Forbes, in a December 2019 article, esports has crossed the $1 billion plateau and has attracted audiences of more than 443 million viewers worldwide. In fact, if esports continues their growth trend, it could theoretically reach total revenues of $2.3 billion within three years, placing it ahead of Formula One and UEFA Champions League. And if you know anything about those two organizations, you know they are literally swimming in cash. Already, winnings at esports tournaments have reached astronomical sums, such as the $25 million prize pot for Dota 2's The International, or the $3 million prize for claiming the Fortnite World Cup, which is currently a greater cash amount than if you won Wimbledon. Esports purses have increased at a staggering pace, and as of the end of 2019, had reached in excess of $173 million. With this meteoric rise in popularity, esports has naturally attracted more pro athletes, with a 43% increase in participants per year since 1998, while prize money has increased at an average rate of 42%. Yeah, esports is that big. With 2020 looking to be another banner year for winnings, participants, and viewership until COVID-19 hit early this year, forcing the industry to restructure. And this is where this topic starts to get really interesting, as whereas most of the world's economies have struggled, the esports and gaming industries have, for the most part, thrived, all while the rest of the world battles a global pandemic. Their answer? shift to online events and develop a broad market plan that not only focus on the most prestigious events, but also one that develops a larger grassroots movement. Ubisoft and their close quarters mega hit Rainbow Six Siege announced in February that it would be evolving into regionalized tournaments to be held online starting in mid-June. CSGO developer Valve announced their online competitions, ESL1, Road to Rio, and DreamHack Masters have both been shifted to an online format to serve as official qualifiers for their respective tournaments later this year. Most long format esports leagues such as Overwatch, Call of Duty, and all League of Legends regional championships, like the European Championship Series, Champions Korea, as well as the Legends Pro League have all followed suit. Seizing the opportunity for increased revenue and remaining relevant, sports teams, including those from the NBA, F1, and NASCAR, have all offered up some sort of sim-like experience ranging from competitions to continuations of COVID-19 canceled seasons. Announced yesterday, Sony has entered the online esports arena with a tournament series for such titles as Modern Warfare, FIFA 20, Mortal Kombat 11, NBA 2K20, Soul Calibur 6, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Now, the announcement was made by way of their official blog, and this new tournament series is available to anyone that owns a PS Plus membership. Reading from their press release, the open series will occur weekly and then culminate into a monthly final. Compete in the weekly qualifiers to earn your way to the monthly final for a top finish, or if you couldn't make it all the way, come back next month to compete in your favorite game again and see what new prizes you can win. New rewards will be introduced each month and will be available to everyone who competes in a tournament. All players will earn a PS4 tournament's theme and avatar for participating in their first tournament, and from there, the value of rewards will increase the more you progress. A special PS4 theme for each game that players complete a qualifier, elite versions of the themes and avatars for players who finish a qualifier in the top 40%, best of the best PS4 tournaments champions themes and avatars for those who make it to a monthly final, and the rarest of the rare champions PS4 themes and avatars for players who finish top and showcase their dominance. Players who win first place in the weekly open qualifiers for select games will take home a cash prize of $100, and the top winners of the monthly finals will have the opportunity to win a share of $1,000 or more prize pool. Those who compete in EA Sports FIFA 20, Mortal Kombat 11, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare in North America and Europe may have a chance to show off their skills to friends and rivals on broadcast hosted by PlayStation. 
High-performing players may be invited to invitational tournaments, and the best of the best will compete on stream in each title's monthly final. Switching back from that Sony press release to current market trends, and what is proving true is that COVID-19 is forcing markets to adjust within the gaming industry. In general, many entities in the esports ecosystem prove to be capable of adjusting their business operations to the new situation as several of the industry's niches outperformed the overall market since the end of January when the first cases of COVID-19 started spreading throughout the world. To be clear, the esports industry is not netting gains from the current situation as companies have had to deal with COVID-related shockwaves, including shifting to remote work, canceling of live events, reduced sponsorships, and media right sales opportunities. What the last few weeks have shown us is that the esports industry is one of the few business models that by the very nature of its corporate infrastructure and product, possesses the ability to adapt and adjust to the COVID situation. Now, this is not to say that everything is going well for the industry. Certain facets, including tournament organizers and esports venue operators, are facing massive financial struggles. Completely interwoven with the continued success of the esports market are those of the game developers. Reportedly, people are spending 39% more on their gaming hobby currently than pre-COVID, and developers such as Activision, Blizzard, EA, and Ubisoft are all expecting increased player counts and revenues in their annual earnings reports. Activision Blizzard started off the year trading at roughly $58 a share, and after dipping to $52 on March 20th, has not only recovered, but has increased share values into the low to mid $70 per share range. Take-Two Interactive, which owns major publishing labels Rockstar Games and 2K, started off the year trading at $122 per share, dipped to a yearly low of $100 per share on March 20th, and has recovered and gained back to being traded at $146 per share. Another category tied to esports that is benefiting from the effects of COVID-19 policies is live streaming. As people are trying to entertain themselves with few options available, they're just turning to watching live streams. Now, according to the quarterly live streaming industry report from Streamlabs, Hatchet, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook all saw quarter one 2020 quarter over quarter lifts in viewership, with Twitch surpassing 3 billion hours watched in a single quarter for the first time. However, it has not all been positive news across the board for esports and the entities associated with it. Now, while several publicly traded esports and gaming companies outperform the general market trends, publicly traded esports organizations mostly suffer from COVID-19 policies as monetization opportunities become scarce. Astralis, a Danish company whose sole purpose is owning and managing esports teams, has experienced a horrific financial year, with stock prices plummeting nearly 53%. Esports competition stocks took the most direct hit from the COVID-19 policies. Allied Esports Entertainment's HyperX Esports Arena Las Vegas was shut down for the first time, and Torque Esports Esports Racing Arena in Miami, which was initially scheduled to open in spring, will likely not be opened anytime soon. All current significant esports tournaments with live audiences have either been canceled, postponed, or moved to an online format. Therefore, organizers are missing out on ticketing, concessions, media rights, and sponsorship revenues. ESL and DreamHack parent MTG expect its revenues in the esports vertical, which accounted for 40% of the group's 2019 revenues, to decrease by 35 to 45% in the first half of 2020 compared to the same time period of 2019. Now, these companies primarily see the cause for their declines due to a variety of government policies to contain the global outbreak, which had a significant impact on its esports vertical as it built around live events revenues from media rights, brand partnerships, ticketing, and merchandise sales. Tied to this incredible rise in revenues relating to all things gaming related has been, and I'm just theorizing here, a massive increase in mobile titles as well as the resurrection of previously dead or disgraced titles all aimed at getting a piece of the corporate pie. For example, Xavient Games announced earlier this month that the Culling franchise would again go live with the Culling Origins. Now, Based on their press release and the gameplay trailer footage, this is the same subpar game from 2016, back for another go, but this time armed with a new pay-to-pay-to-play monetization scheme that makes EA look like a charity foundation. 
Along those same lines, Battle Pass, a monthly subscription model already found in all top 100 grossing shooter and MOBA games in China, is now gaining more and more popularity here in the US for our mobile titles. What can be extracted from all of this is that within this global event surrounding COVID, many businesses have fallen by the wayside. But with the positioning of esports and gaming, along with how wildly popular this entertainment option has proven, market trends all lead us to this inevitable truth. During the age of COVID, esports and gaming have thrived. I'm going to wrap this one up right here, and I look forward to reading your thoughts and feedback in the comment section. If you haven't yet done so, smash the sub button for more video game news and reviews, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. Links to support my content creation include Patreon and Teespring, both listed in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.